Hello, my name is Tom Newlands, Applications Engineer for Pressure Sensors at Milexis. In this video, I will explain how to change the pressure transfer curve of a pressure sensor with the PTC04 programming tool and the 90330 software. This video continues from the Pressure Sensors Configuration Guide video. A general overview of the requirements and software can be found there. There are two ways to change the transfer curve of a pressure sensor either by simply reconfiguring it in software or by doing a full calibration. In the first part of the video, I will describe the reconfiguration method and calibration method. Afterwards, I will demonstrate how to use the re reconfiguration tool in the software. And finally, I will demonstrate how to use the calibration tool. This video applies mainly to the factory calibrated MLX 90817 and MLX 90821, but the calibration portion also applies to the interfaces MLX90328 and MLX90329. The MLX90817 and MLX90821 are available factory calibrated for various transfer curves to fit many different applications. But if a different transfer curve is needed, it is possible to configure it yourself with the PTC04 programming tool. The most convenient method is to use the reconfiguration tool embedded in the 90330 software to cal quickly calculate and program new calibration parameters from the existing factory calibration. This method is possible when the new transfer curve is similar to the original transfer curve. The reconfiguration tool calculates new digital calibration parameters based on the calibration parameters already programmed in the device. The analog frontend remains unchanged this way, so the pressure span cannot change too much. As a general guideline, an increase up to 10% or decrease of up to 30% of the pressure span of the original transfer curve is usually possible. Here you can see an example of some possible modifications. The reconfiguration tool can invert, add an offset, modify the gain or do a combination of all three on the original transfer curve. Please note that the reconfiguration will only work accurately when done on virgin factory calibrated devices. Devices that were already reconfigured or had their calibration parameters in each square from changed should not be used with the reconfiguration tool. The second method to change the transfer curve is by doing a full calibration. This method does not depend on a prior calibration, so the new transfer curve is only limited by the sensitivity of the sensing element. The calibration consists of applying 1 to 3 pressures at up to 4 different temperatures. At least two pressures have to be applied at the first temperature to configure the analog front end and determine a base offset and gain parameter. Each additional sample adds an extra calibration parameter which improves the compensation. The pressure sensors support calibrations at up to four different temperatures. At two temperatures, up to three pressure points can be applied. At the remaining temperatures, only up to two pressure points can be applied. This limits the calibration to 10 points at most. For example, a commonly used 7-point calibration consists of 3 temperatures, with 3 pressure points at the first temperature and 2 pressure points at the remaining 2 temperatures. This results in a calibration where the pressure signal is compensated by offset, gain and non-linearity factors. The offset and gain factors also each have a second-order temperature compensation. This covers the two methods to set a custom transfer curve. Now I will start with a demonstration of the reconfiguration tool. There is an MLX 90817 absolute pressure sensor already connected to the PTC04. In the Melexis programmable toolbox, I open the 90330 user interface module. And once the PTC04 is connected, we can start with reconfiguring the device in the solver tab. This tab is mainly used for calibrations, but it also has a button to open the reconfiguration tool. Before starting, I select the MLX 90817 in the product window and then I press the button Reconfigure Transfer Curve to open the reconfiguration tool. In this window, the new transfer curve has to be described at the top, the current transfer curve in the middle, and the bottom contains some additional settings related to the factory calibration. In this example, I want a transfer curve where 0.2 bar corresponds with 10% output signal, and where 4.2 bar corresponds with 90% output signal. The device connected to the PTC04 has a transfer curve defined by 0.5 bar at 0.5 volt and 4 bar at 4.5 volt. This is a similar transfer curve as the new one, so the reconfiguration can be done. 
The bottom parameters have to be filled in according to the reconfiguration table in the software manual. With all settings filled in, the recalculate calibration button can be pressed. If the calculation was successful, it is then possible to program the new parameters with the program parameters button. The device is now reconfigured to its new transfer curve. This can be verified by measuring the output of the sensor over pressure and temperature. It is recommended to have a similar functional test at the end of the production line. This brings us to the final part of the video. The reconfiguration window can be closed, so the solver tab is active again. From here, I will calibrate the connected MLX90817 to a different transfer curve. To save time, I will only calibrate at room temperature. This means the output will not be temperature compensated. To begin, ensure that the correct product number is selected. In this case, MLX90817. After that, the settings have to be set. The first setting is the Interruptible Solver checkbox. When this is enabled, the calibration can be stopped after the first temperature and resumed later on. I will not do this in this demo, so I leave it unchecked. The next checkbox can always be enabled. It adds a low pass filter to the temperature signal. Then there are the clamping levels of the outputs, which is set here to 5% and 95% of the supply voltage. And finally, there is a CG range. CG is the coarse gain setting of the analog frontend. During the first two calibration steps, the software will sweep over all coarse gain settings in this range to find the ideal value for the calibrated pressure span. In this demo, I expect the value to be around 7. So I set the range between 6 and 8 to reduce the calibration time. On the right of the solver tab, the target output values have to be set in percent of supply voltage. By default, they are 10%, 90% and 50% for pressures 1, 2 and 3 for all temperatures. Meaning that at pressure 1, the pressure corresponding with 10% of the target output should be applied. At pressure 2, the pressure corresponding with 90% of output and the pressure applied when doing the calibration step at pressure 3 should correspond with 50% of the target output. The targets are independent for the different temperatures and can be set to whatever, whatever value best suits the calibration setup that is used. In this demo, the default targets are kept. Once all parameters are set, they can be saved to an ini file. To do this, click Save in the file menu at the top left. The dialog window will ask where to save it and suggest a file name. If the same name is used and the file is stored in the default location, it will automatically load when starting up the user interface in the future. To manually load the ini file, click Open in the File menu to open the file dialog. Before selecting the ini file, I open it with a text editor to see a list of all settings, some of which are not available in the user interface. The PSF description has a full list of all these settings. The one that is of note now is T-Warmup. For trials in a lab environment, it is recommended to set this value to 3000. Then save the ini file and open it in the user interface. Now the calibration can begin. First press New Device. This step checks the communication with the device, reads the full E-square prompt and writes or resets some parameters which are relevant for the calibration. The Melexus Programmable Toolbox window will display the logs of this step and all other calibration steps in its data log at the bottom of the window. As can be seen, new device logs the current and some important e square parameters like the Melexus ID and the calibration parameters. The Melexus Programmable Toolbox can save the logs directly to a file. To enable this, go to the Tools menu and click Options. This opens the Options window. The calibration logs are grouped with data logging. Select log to this file and choose to which file the data must be saved. This is useful to investigate the root cause of a failed calibration. Once the first pressure corresponding with 10% is applied and stable, the button set pressure 1 of temperature 1 can be pressed. During this step, it will go over all course gain settings within the selected CG range and find the optimal course offset value for each course gain to get as close as possible to the target ADC value. 
The pressure ADC and temperature ADC value is also stored for each optimal course offset and course gain pair. This can also be seen in the data log where successive approximation is used to determine the correct course offset for each course gain. At the end of this step, it will also automatically characterize the gain and offset error of the output DAC on a product with analog output. So this error can be compensated for. This DAC compensation is done once for every temperature. When set pressure 1 succeeds, a green check mark appears on the button. Pressure 2 can now be applied. Press set pressure 2 when the pressure is stable. In this step, the course offset and course gain pairs determined in the previous step are used in a successive approximation to find the final course offset and course gain. All following calibration steps will use this course offset and course gain setting to read the pressure and temperature ADC values. With the second pressure step completed, the calibration parameters can already be calculated. But since it consists of only two pressures at one temperature, it will only be a gain and offset compensation of pressure without temperature compensation. If the sensor has some non-linear behavior in the chosen pressure range, it can be useful to have this compensated for by adding a third pressure at temperature 1. More calibration steps can be done at additional temperatures to improve the calibration. Once all steps which you want to do are completed, the Calculate button can be pressed to calculate the new e squared from parameters. Once this step is successful, the parameters can be programmed with the Program button. Like with the reconfiguration, it is recommended to do an end-of-line test over pressure and temperature to verify the accuracy of the output signal. This covers the reconfiguration and calibration methods. More information can be found in the software manual included in the software package of 90330.